Hello, Dork Squad. I'm Jonathan Cormer, and you're listening to Dork Tales Storytime. John and Character presents Dork Tales Storytelling with a Geekish Twist. Jonathan, Jonathan, come quick. What? Reg? Walter? What's the matter? Oh, it's an emergency this time, mate. Yeah, an emergency. Oh, no. Are you two all right? We're cold. And shocked. I thought moving to the forest from the faraway lands of Australia would improve my life. But this appears to have been the opposite. Well, uh, uh, tell me what happened. Oh, Reggie, the feeling's coming back to the tip of my tail. (laughs) Oh, yes, Walter, over here. There's a nice warm spot near the radiator. Uh, guys? Ah, right, sorry. Uh, Now that my ears are warmed up, I'm starting to think clearly. Uh, When I woke up this morning, I went out to look at my rock garden. You've seen his rock garden, right, Jonathan? He's got some great rocks on the sandy edge of the woods. Yeah, uh, great rocks and some potatoes, for what I recall. Exactly. I worked in some tubers, and a few weeks ago, I even planted a few sunflower seeds, but it's all spoiled now. (sighs) There's a foul fiend afoot. (laughs) You've been hanging out with Sherlock Nettlesby quite a bit, haven't you, Reg? No. Well, yes. Why? Oh, never mind. Uh, Walter, what happened after you went out to your garden? Well, I kicked up some sand, as I'm quite accustomed to getting sand between my toes first thing in the morning. It reminds me of home, you see. But instead of brown bits of sand between my toes, it was all this cold white stuff. And tell him about your garden. Oh, yeah. Well, the rocks are still doing great, but neither the potatoes nor the sunflowers are growing. Not even a sprout in weeks. And tell him about your tail. Right. And my tail and my toes instantly froze. Ah, I see. Did you not hear us, Jonathan? Someone stole the plants and froze poor Walter's toes. This isn't an emergency, you two. How dare you, sir? Reg, it's winter. (laughs) Winter? It's not even close to June. Yeah, Jonathan, it's not even close to... Wait, wait, what? (laughs) Ha, you see, Walter, you're from Australia, in the Southern Hemisphere, but the lands of Once Upon a Time follow a similar schedule to the Northern Hemisphere. We get winter from December to March. We do? Then what's with all the white sand? Reg, that's the first snow. You know this. Hmm, I must have blocked it out. Oh, that makes so much more sense now. I've heard of snow. You have? Yeah, we get snow in the winter in some parts of Australia. But not from where I'm from, mostly in the mountains. Ah, that makes sense. Yeah, sorry, Walter. You have to figure out something else to do with your garden during these months. I would have planned differently. What a waste. And now we'll have to wait for winter to be over to have any fun. Oh, come on, Reg. Winter isn't all bad. Frozen toes and no sunflowers, Jonathan. Pshaw. No wonder I blocked out the snow. And now poor Walter has to deal with some northern hemisphere rubbish. I mean, it's not all rubbish. No, it is. Winter is codswallop. Poppycock! Nonsense! And, dare I say it, for I am an expert, hedgehog wash! <laughs> okay, okay, Reg. I think you're getting a little carried away with all the synonyms. Plus, Walter's going to have the wrong impression of winter here in the woods. And we wouldn't want that. Oh, we wouldn't? Well, maybe I just wasn't cut out for this kind of winter. I'm an Aussie, mate. He's an Aussie, mate? Friends, Uh, I don't think it's my place to convince you where to live, Walter Wallaby, but I do think you'll like it here, and I have a friend who can help you make up your mind to stay. 
Oh, no can do, Jonathan. I've already told you I detest winter. Now, I know that isn't true, Reg. And I wasn't talking about you. I was talking about my friend, Jack Frost. Snack Fox? Oh, no can do, mate. He's all out of snacks today. I got his final pack of saltines yesterday. Mm, not Snack Fox. Oh, but I love Snack Fox. He always has such a solid supply of Vegemite. Okay, we all can agree Snack Fox has the best snacks. It's in his name, and we all love him. But I wasn't mentioning Snack Fox this time. I was actually talking about a great guy who I haven't introduced you to yet, Reg. Well, then, who? Yeah, who? I said Jack Frost. Oh, what's up, guys? Jack! Oh, I've seen you before. I saw you climbing trees near my home last week. You must live at the base of the Cliffhanger Mountains. How did you know? I typically hit the cliffhangers first, and wallabies tend to dwell in the sandy, rocky areas. I just put two and two together. But what were you doing climbing trees? I was whispering to the last few leaves, telling them to drop before I started up the snow this week. Ah, I see by the looks of your soggy toes, Mr. Wallaby. You've already experienced my handiwork. Wait, I'm sorry. I'm still very confused. Well, Reg, there's a carol sung at Christmas time, a holiday that some folks celebrate where I come from, that starts with chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Yum, Yum chestnuts! chestnuts. Uh huh. Then it goes. Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Oh, not my nose. I need that for sniffing. Please don't eat it. Oh, I won't eat your nose, little fella. When people sing that old tune, they're usually just describing how cold it gets in the winter. And how the tip of someone's nose tends to get extra cold. Yeah, so essentially what we're saying is that I'm a magical weather pixie, not a monster. Oh, that's a relief. I couldn't deal with any more shocking news today. Mr. Reginald, I hear you're feeling down about my favorite season, but I wonder if I might be able to convince you how much fun you can have during these chilly months. Hmm, I don't know. Um... You can call me Jack, or Frost, or Winter, or Snow, or Ice, or... Uh, all right, all right, I hear you, Frosty. Uh, but I can't think of one thing that's fun about Winter. Oh, yeah? Yeah. How about sledding? Oh, my gosh, sledding. Uh, okay, that is something I can talk about. Uh, Wally, here in winter, when we get quite a bit of snow... Thanks to me. Yes, um, thanks to Frosty. When we get quite a bit of snow, we grab sleds and inner tubes. Like potatoes? <laughs> oh, not Tubers, Walter. Inner tubes. You use them to slide down steep hills covered in snow. Jonathan and I sled in the whimsy woods. Sometimes my quills pop a tube, though. <laughs> and that's why we have a rule that Reg always uses a sled. We learned our lesson the hard way when our tube ran out of air halfway down the hill last year. <laughs> what fun! And last winter I saw you catching snowflakes on your tongue. Right, Jonathan? Yes. Then, Reg and I went inside and looked at some snowflakes under the microscope. Remember what we found, Reg? Oh, yes. We discovered that no two snowflakes are exactly alike. There are all these beautiful shapes and fractal patterns. Snowflakes are gorgeous under the microscope. Why, thank you, Reg. Snowflakes are my true artistry on display. Some of my finest work, if I do say so myself. Oh, I want to see snowflakes. You can also build magnificent snow people with carrots for noses. And have a fun snowball fight. And make beautiful snow angels by plopping down on your back and flapping your arms and legs wildly while laying in fluffy snow and... Huh? <laughs> I suppose that one's a bit harder to describe. But it is quite fun. See, Walter? There are plenty of reasons to enjoy winter. But I know sometimes you miss home. So, we can tell you about ways to enjoy the season without being out in the cold. Like what? Tell him about the wonder that is hot chocolate. 
Hmm, hot chocolate. We love to make warm drinks, and we stay cozy and bundled up on days when we don't feel like getting too chilly. Don't forget to add in a few marshmallows. Hmm, I can get used to that. Relaxing inside feels more like my speed. Right? Winter doesn't have to be completely about Jack Frost. Uh, no offense, Jack. None taken. I love getting cozy after work. The same way some creatures, like bears, hibernate in winter, the cold weather can be a great excuse to slow down and enjoy your time at home. You can always go outside and have a ton of fun with your snowball fights and sledding, but there's something extra special about coming home after a long day and getting cozy by the fire with a nice book. Or enjoying a warm meal with friends. Plus, winter is beautiful. Jack Frost makes the whole world a little sparkly and a whole lot more crisp. There are lots of ways to enjoy winter together. Wow, I can't believe I was ready to move from this place. Looks like we could have a lot of fun in the winter. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Jonathan and Frosty, for reminding me how fun the season can be. Yeah, thank you for popping by, Jack, and helping us remember that this whole new, beautiful, fun, and unique season is ahead of us. My pleasure. And hey, Reg, please spread the word. I'm not about to nip at anybody's nose. I just like bringing the cool. You got it, my man. I'll tell everyone how chill you are. <laughs> Delightful. Keep it freezy, my friends. Oh, we will. Looks like we're ready for winter. Seems like my work here is done, so I should get back to the job. There's no business like snow business. Wow. Can you believe it, Wally? We just met the Jack Frost, a total celebrity. Yeah, I can't believe we know him. There's so much fun to be had in the rain, snow, or sunshine. Exactly. We can all find fun, no matter the season. Ooh, let's bust out the sleds and the microscope for next time the snowflakes fall from the sky. All ready to try this hot chocolate you speak of. <laughs> all right, you two. We still have a whole season to... Maybe we should build a snow person first. I don't have any carrots. Oh, we can get carrots. And, you know, we have time to... Ooh, we can chop down some wood. You guys, throw logs in the fireplace. Maybe we can take it one fun activity at a... Light them up! Roast some chestnuts. <gasps> That's the best idea you've had all day. <sighs> it's going to be a good winter. This has been a John in Character production. Today's story was written by Amy Thompson and edited by Molly Murphy. Special thanks to Kyle Elliott, who voiced the character Jack Frost. All other characters were performed by Jonathan Cormer. Sound recording and production by Jermaine Hamilton at Hamilton Studio Recordings. Reach out to us on Instagram or email us at dorktalesstorytime at gmail.com. Find links in the show notes or go to dorktalesstorytime.com. Now. Go be the hero of your own story, and we'll see you next, Once Upon a Time. So gather your squad for all to see. It's a universe that we've imagined. There's two centers, and lessons learned. This is where the unexpected happens. Join our humble hosts and hit the trails of the wonderful, wacky, wild. Dork tale.